in this video we will look at service discovery and why is it required in cloud native architecture let's begin with a very simple use case suppose we have a client service and this client service needs to call service 1 in order to call service 1 client service must know IP address and port of service 1. For example, let's say IP address and port would be 10.0.0.1 colon 8080. So using a REST template and passing this IP address and port, we can call service 1 from the client. But what if we have multiple services, let's say 10, 20 services in the number. Then hard coding IP address and port of each of the services in the client service code would not be a good approach. This is because in the future it would happen your service need to be refactored and removed from your application. It may be hosted on a different machine. So changing the client code is not a good approach. A better approach would be put all the IP address and port of those services in a configuration file and client would read the configuration file and then call the service. Even if you need to change the network location, you would need to change at configuration file. And in a traditional application, services are run on servers and the network location of these servers are generally static in nature. Moreover, in order to prevent system failure or service failure, we would require different instances of the same service. Let's say we have service 1 instance A, we have service 1 instance B running on a different machine, we have service 1 instance C running on another different machine. So now, client would read IP address and port of these instances from configuration file and using a load balancer client would call either service 1 instance A or service 1 instance B or service 1 instance C. This approach would work fine in a traditional monolithic architecture. But in case of uh, microservices Microservices are generally hosted or deployed in cloud and in cloud native architecture, if it is a complex one, there would be large number of microservices and each of these microservices since hosted on cloud, the IP address of these microservices would be dynamic in nature. It also be the case that IP address of these microservices would change maybe due to failure, maybe due to up start, maybe due to auto scaling. So it is very difficult to use hard coded config file approach in case of microservices. It should be dynamic in nature. To resolve this issue, concept of service discovery and service registry came into the picture. Let's understand first what is service registry. So what is service registry? In a very simple terms, it is generally a database which contains network location, IP address and port of service instances and service name of the service in the form of key value pair. And this service registry would run on servers or it could be a cluster of servers. So if it is cluster of servers, it would be based on replication model for consistency. Common examples of service registry are Netflix that provide Eureka server, Apache that provide Zookeeper, CNCF provide etcd, etcd is the base for Kubernetes and HashiCorp console. Now there are two ways in which service discovery could be done. First is client side service discovery and another is server side service discovery. Let's have a look at client-side service discovery. In case of client-side service discovery, client service is responsible for discovering of all the available service instances and 
routing of the request across these service instances. So we would have a service registry and all the instances and the services during startup time would register themselves to the service registry. Similarly, the registration of these services and their instances would happen at time of shutdown or removal of the service. Now the client service would request service registry for the available instances and service registry would return all the available instances and depending upon the load balancing code inside client service and the algorithm used in the load balancing client service would route the request either to service 1 instance A, service 1 instance B or service 1 instance C. The advantage of client side service discovery is that it is very simple and straightforward and apart from service registry there is no more complex logic involved or part involved in client side. It is advantage is that there is tight coupling between client service code and the service registry code. Moreover, if your client service is written in one programming language and the available service registry is in another programming language, either you would have to write some mediator to interact between them or you would have to write your own logic for service discovery. Netflix provides you Eureka server and Eureka server is based on client side service discovery mechanism. Let's have a look at server side service discovery. In case of server side service discovery, registration to the service registry remains same during startup of the services. They register themselves to the service registry and during removal of the services or shutdown, the registration of service from the service registry happens. Now client service instead of requesting directly to the service registry would request through a load balancer. Now this load balancer would request to the service registry for all the available instances and the service registry would return all the available instances to the load balancer and then load balancer would route the request depending upon the algorithm used to either service 1 instance A, service 1 instance B and service 1 instance C. The advantage of server side discovery is there is no direct and tight coupling between the client service and the service registry. The client service code would not need to aware about the service registry. It is the responsibility of the load balancer to manage discovery of the instances and communicate to the service registry and route to different available instances of the service. The common example of server side discovery is elastic load balancer provided by Amazon. Now this discovery of uh, services either would be treated as a separate code and could be used as a library or it could be built inside the infrastructure. So example of built-in infrastructure service discovery would happen in Kubernetes. So Kubernetes use etcd and a DNS and environment service mechanism for service discovery. Now let's understand what happens during registration of the service. Now suppose we have a client service and a service registry and client service needs to register it to the service registry. The first thing client service would need to know about the location of service registry. So network location of service registry is used inside the client service code to know about the service registry, IP address and port. Now with the available of network location of service registry, client service would send a request to the service registry. This request would contain service name and IP address port of client service. So inside service registry, these are stored in the form of key value pair. Service name would be the key and value would be IP address and port. 
it also may be the case that after registering client service is down to avoid such issue or remove stale service instances client service periodically sends refresh request to the service registry and the interval of this refresh request would be 30 seconds 50 seconds 20 seconds so if after first refresh request service registry is not getting refresh request again let's say first refresh request failed second refresh request failed third refresh request failed then service registry would automatically remove the instance of your client service this is done to remove the stale instance of client service now the service registration either could be done through self or using a third party so if the client service is directly requesting service registry with the service name IP address and port then it is called self registration in case of third party registration third party act as registrar and this third party would look for startup of the service and shutdown of the service and accordingly register and deregister it to the service registry open source registrar project is a common example of third party registration now let's understand a very simple use case of apache kafka and how service discovery of broker is done inside it in case of kafka acting as a messaging system we would have servers and servers are called brokers here so let's say we have broker 1 broker 2 and broker 3 and a group of brokers is called cluster in kafka now kafka have zookeeper acting as a service registry to these brokers and the cluster along with the zookeeper consists the ecosystem of kafka since this is a messaging system we would have producer and we would have consumers let's say producer push the message to the brokers or servers and consumers consume or pull the message from the clusters or brokers so how do producer know that to which server or broker it has to push the message in other words how consumer would know from which server or broker it would have to consume the message as i told earlier broker register themselves to the zookeeper so if a new broker comes it would have to register itself to the zookeeper if a broker is down zookeeper deregister that broker so before pushing the message directly to broker producer would go to the zookeeper get the broker id and then push the message to the broker with that broker id similarly in case of consumer it will go to the zookeeper get the broker id maintain the offset and then consume the message from that particular broker so this is how a high level architecture of kafka looks now let's summarize all the points we have learned service discovery is an important characteristic of cloud native architecture and service registry is key component of service discovery service registry is generally a database which contains service name and network location of service and service name and network location are stored in the form of key value pair in the service registry there are two ways of doing service discovery first one is client side another one is server side service discovery also there are two patterns for doing service registration first is self registration and another is third party registration Common examples include Netflix Eureka, Apache Zookeeper, Havicup Console, CNCF ETCD. CNCF stands for Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Netflix Eureka is a client side service discovery, and Apache Zookeeper Console ETCD can work as client side as well as server side service discovery. ETCD is the backbone for Kubernetes service discovery.